it is your God-given right to be completely and utterly amazing. Not today, every day. Well, let me help you. 24K is on the way. We're going to help you figure out how to level up your life at every possible measure inside your life. Well, welcome to the 24K Show with Derek Gant. And today, we're going to tackle three things. Number one, it's okay to segregate. Number two, how to man up and cook for mama and why that's good for you and your family. And finally, we're going to touch on how you can be fit if you've never gotten off the couch before. There's a way for you to get up and get started without hurting yourself. We're going to close with the one secret, that one secret you absolutely, unequivocally have to know in order to make 2021 the best year ever. Stay tuned. TV. Hey, I hope that you are ready for a real inside look on what I do, how I do. We're going to take you inside the loop, give you some money tips, some health tips. We're going to show you how to live your best life each and every day to this highest potential. Just follow me. We're going right into it. Hey, so what's going on in the news? Now, most of the time, I don't watch the news. I get as little information as I can to cloud my judgment and to, to just monotonize my day. But it's important to understand the basics, and I'm going to give you some things that are really important for you to understand regarding the markets, regarding your things that affect your daily life, just to give you some kind of feel for what you really should know if you're watching the news, what you can avoid and what you should, should know about. So in the news, it's important to know that obviously vaccines are out. The tier one providers are, have gotten them. They're already starting to, to dish out for tier two people. Um, believe it or not, there are two shots required. You get one shot and then there's a second round, I think four weeks later, depending on if you which company, there's two provider companies, which company you get it from. So there's two rounds of shots. Now, the reason why I think that that's important or that you should know about that is that because you should be looking at the results. You should be looking to see what type of impact it has. Yes, for your personal health. Yes, for your global health. But what about investing in those companies? Is there an opportunity there? Just food for thought for you to consider. Always think about a mass diagnosis um, or a mass appeal held by a privately owned company might be some opportunity there. The other interesting thing about the uh, the vaccination is that a year ago today, uh, in Wuhan had the first lockdown of any major city in the world. Um, one year ago today, I mean, time flies so fast and Right now, they've done the best job of locking down the, the COVID virus. They've had a small you know, setback, but for the most part, they've done really well, much better than we have here in America. But also to note is that China was the only major uh, country or economy in the world to grow last year. 
Everybody else was flat or down. They also, they controlled their virus, but their economy also grew. So we could take some notes from them and pay attention to who's growing in the world, where you should be putting your money, where you should be thinking about putting your money. Um, but most importantly, we're going to talk a little bit later about how to get some money. So U.S. equity indexes are near or at their all-time high. So if you were to follow the age-old adage, buy low, sell high, that tells you most likely now's not the time to start your portfolio. Now's the time to take a look and see what's performing really well, what's not performing really well, what the world needs, what people need, and where you could possibly watch for a correction or where you can watch to see what companies have always done well or doing well in tough times. And if we expect to continue with tough times, you might want to put some money in those areas. Um, also in the news, we're going to talk about the first of the year, right? It is the first of the year. Most people set New Year resolutions and you want to get fit. You want to change your life. You want to set some goals. Well, for those of you who have... Um, not been real well with your workouts, you don't want to go into the gym, you're a little apprehensive about about getting out and about amongst other people, there is an app slash website called Dareby, D-A-R-E-B-E-E.com. They give you a workout of the day using your body weight, using things at home, chairs and tables and different things that you can use that you already have to help you improve your body. Now, let me tell you something. When you improve your physical fitness, you automatically set off some hormones, pheromones, and it improves your mindset. You feel so much better once the workout's over. I know during the workout, it absolutely sucks. But but once it's over, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel better because you accomplished something. You're going to feel better because you got your body moving. It's not about how aggressive you are. It's about how consistent you can be when you're looking to improve your lifestyle and specifically your fitness. So try Derby. I don't have any connection with them. I found it. It's free. They do ask for donations, but hey, they're only asking for a dollar donation to give you a free workout every once in a while. I think it's worth it to move your body. So darebee.com, check it out. It could be something that would really help you to get moving. And they give you the videos. They give you the moves. They show you what the moves are. So you're not kind of left out there in a lurch on what to do. And finally, in our news, if you have a question, you can ask me. Just reach out and ask your boy anything that you want. Now, listen, you can ask me anything you want, but I'm only answering questions about fitness, family, finances, how to get your more performance uh, at work, how to react to things in a better way to level up your life. And of course, I'm answering all your money questions. So reach out, dg at DerekGant.com. Ask your questions. I promise you somebody will get back to you with an answer, myself or somebody on my team. That's the way we roll. So I hope that, that you will start listening to some news and forget the crazy news. Go to the things that make mean the most to you. I'll be right back. So today on the Real DG segment, what we're going to do is cook a lasagna. Hence, we're in the kitchen. So I'm going to put my special touches into my favorite dish of all time that I love to cook, which is making lasagna. Now, the cool part and the reason why I chose lasagna was because I got a phone call from my son saying, hey, dad. Um, mom, my ex-wife, wants a lasagna for her birthday, and guess who she wants to make it? Boom, exactly. Now, I know, she knows, everybody in the family knows, I make the absolute best lasagna. Now, I will say that at one point, somewhere, there was a contest, a lasagna making contest between myself, my sister, and my brother. And needless to say, let's just finish the story with the judges cheated. 
I don't know if they were bribed. I don't know if they got extra dessert. But let's just say they cheated, meaning I lost. But neither here nor there, I still make a killer lasagna. Now, I want you to know that in the real deal, you always start off with making sure your area is spick and span. Now, I'm a little bit of a clean freak, so I make sure that I bleach everything down, everything's clean before we get started. And we, everybody knows that you can't start in a mess. You got to start with a really clean space. So the issue or the question that you should really be asking yourself is why is he talking about lasagna and why is he making a lasagna for his ex-wife? Here's the reason. I think it is vitally important in order to live a 24K life, to live your best life possible, that you have amazing relationships, that you have solid, good relationships, even with people that you no longer spend that special time with. So I have a great relationship or, you know, as good as you can have with my ex-wife. So I want to see her. It's her birthday. So I want to see her have a great birthday. I want to see her win. I want to see my son win. Me making lasagna makes everybody happy uh, except for my waistline. But I don't even know if I'll get any. We'll see if she shares. So we're going to make a lasagna. So the first thing is to get everything cleaned up. The next step is to make sure that you get everything you need from the store so that you get your special ingredients. Now, I get my ingredients from my grandmother. I was a grandma's boy growing up. So my grandmother was the head chef at one of the largest steakhouses for over 30 years in our area. So when she used to cook for the family, she would say, hey baby, can get me this pot, get me this pan, boil this water, do this, do that, mix that. And so I learned how to make lasagna, which is why I know mine is the best, even though the judges cheated. And so I've learned how to make a lot of dishes that most guys really don't know how to make or cook. And so we're going to pull all our ingredients together. And I've since added some since grandma's passed away. I've kind of tinkered with her, her recipe. Couple things I'll tell you. I don't use ricotta. I use cottage kind of cheese, and I use zesty, spicy Bob Evans sausage in there. It gives that extra zing. So we're gonna make this lasagna, and we'll be right back. Got all the ingredients here. And I'm not real happy because he didn't go to the store I normally go to, but that's the reason why you go yourself. So you get what you get. So we're going to mix all this together. And we're going to show you what the end result looks like. Decided that they wanted to learn the secret recipe. So uh, he just asked. He left and came back. So we decided might as well hand down this recipe. Since my grandmother gave it to me, I give it to him. We'll see how well he does with it. Uh, keep your fingers crossed. Put his age right now. We gotta crack it and put it in a yeah. whole egg. So we'll see how well he does. I keep you posted. Uh, we really won't know and know until it's over, over. But I'm pretty sure it'll be pretty good. Fingers. So we did it. We got all the layers. It's three layers. He did a good job. He followed directions pretty well. He's putting on the final cheese touches. Now you can never skip on the cheese. That's all I'm gonna say. Just don't skip on the cheese. So lots of cheese. We use three different cheeses. I've used four different cheeses. Um, can never have enough cheese for lasagna. It's the key ingredient to the uh, perfecto deliciousness of lasagna. All right, so here we go. There it is. It's ready. Ready to go in the oven for about an hour, hour and a half. Everything in here is cooked but the eggs. So we used eggs and cottage cheese, but the noodles are cooked, the meat's cooked, everything's cooked. So all you got to do is to make it nice and melty close together. What you put in there for? Sorry, what temperature? 375. <laughs> Something like that. Everything's cooked. So you can't go wrong. 375, 400 for about an hour, hour and a half. The higher the temperature, the, the slower the time. Okay. So we'll show you the results when it's all over. Okay. The results are in. And the lasagna, big hit. The party went well. Dinner went well. Everybody's happy. And once again, we help someone live the 24K lifestyle. I hope that you stay tuned. We have more to come. The quality time at Marco's. Hello to being a game changer, an original.
And to those who make it authentic, we say hello with the Founder Select Pizza, Old World Pepperoni, Sliced Italian Sausage, Mushrooms, on dough made fresh every day, and a sauce from the original Giamarco recipe. Hello to an Old World Original. Every store, every day, the Italian way. Hello, Primo. I am intent on bringing you quality information that is going to help you at home in your wallet to make sure that you're growing financially. You know, you're out there, you're making money. You know, why not keep as much of it as you can? Society, the system is geared for you to spend every dime you bring in the house. We want to help you figure out how to keep more invest more, and then we want to help you figure out how to make more, and then keep more of that, and make more of that, and keep more of that. Every household in America that has a working adult should strive to have at least five multiple streams of income, five different streams of income. But before we get into that, and we'll get into that in another episode, the first stream is the stream that you go to nine to five, most likely, or if you're self-employed, your primary source of income. I want to show you how to separate and segregate your money so that you can clearly see where it's going, why it's going there, and make sure you have a determination that that's where you want it to be. Now, I'm only going to give you the really quick version so that you can get a good idea. If you want more information or if you have questions, like I've always said, DG at DerekGant.com, and I'll be happy to answer your specific questions, but this is a great idea for people who don't have a money system. Now, who doesn't have a money system? 85% of working families do not have a money system, and if they do, they're not implementing it. I know this because if you go out and you Google it, all you have to do is ask the question, uh, Mr. Google, what percentage of working families have less than $1,000? Answer is 85%. That means people are making money, but they're spending it as fast as it comes in. So we want to go through the process of what it takes in order for you to keep more of your money. The first step, no matter what anyone says to you, all the get rich things, all of them, the first step is to do inventory. Doing inventory basically says, how much money am I bringing in the house and where is it going? So pull your bank statement from last month and write down every bit of income that you deposited into your account and then write down every expense, every Amazon purchase, every fast food purchase, every gasoline purchase, everything, write it down and give it a category. Is it groceries? Is it entertainment? Is it a bill? You know, write down and separate out where all your money went. And I'm guaranteeing that you're going to be surprised if you currently don't have a money system about where all your money goes. So going through this exercise is called taking inventory. Now on Derek on Demand, I have a full series on how to get that schedule, including the forms for you. So if you want it, again, email me. But going through Understanding to manage your money, the first thing that you want to do is take inventory. So most people have a main bank account. They have a general bank account. And inside that account, they do all of their banking. So if you have a husband and wife and they have a general account, they have one account, two debit cards. Both people are shopping out of that account. They're taking care of the kids out of the account. They're getting their hair cut out of that account. They're doing everything out of one account. And that causes all by itself a lot of problems for people. So you have your general account, and I'm a terrible artist, but just think about this as being a bucket, and that represents your bank account. Up here, you have another bucket. It's a small bucket, and this is your income. So you have your income going directly into this account, and then you're using this account for all of your spending needs. And that's not the proper way to go because when you swipe that card, how do you know you're swiping 
the item that you need for what the money was allocated for. Every dollar has a duty. Every dollar has a duty. So what duty is that swipe going for the popcorn or the movies that you're buying? Is that for entertainment? Do you know that that's money for entertainment? Or is that part of your electric bill money or your car payment money? You know, are your bills being paid on time? I mean, there's so much that we have to go over. I'm just going to talk about why you segregate your money because then we can get, get into how it helps you in another episode. So you have your general account here. It's an account that everybody uses. So what I suggest is that you label this account bills. Label that account bills. Use this account just to pay your bills. Then what you do is you tell your employer, look, I need some spending money and you're gonna do a little bit of inventory, right? So everything that you need for gas, food, and personal care, you're going to figure out how much that is and have that deposited per paycheck into that account. That simple, that simple solution will go a long way with you having more money at the end of the month. Now, it takes a little bit of getting used to. It's not something that you're going to set up right away. Some people say, well, I didn't know the banks would let you have more than one account. They'll let you have as many accounts as you want. Now, that does not apply to credit unions. But most bank accounts will allow you to have as many checking or savings accounts that you can stomach. Your employer usually will separate your direct deposit. So you can tell them, put $2,000 in this account and put $1,000 in that account. And you don't use this account for food, gasoline, or groceries. You only use that one. If you have a spouse or a significant other, then you do it for both of you. You have a hers and a his or hers and hers, or his and his, or whatever you have, whoever's in your house. Like my son has his own spending account, so we have his and his. So depending on who's in your house and what their responsibilities are, you want to segregate your money. Now, if we kept going with this, you'll notice that we also have an account for savings. Now, most people have a Christmas club. Most people have a Christmas club. And most people's Christmas club has this much money in it. I mean, it's practically empty. That's because they go in and they spend this money. They don't have these accounts, so then they go and attack this when this is short. If you only put money in here for bills and only money for spending, whatever's left over, you know, the chances are really good. You should be able to have that money in that account at the end of the month. Now, all of this precipitates the fact that you got to first do Inventory, that's right. We had to go do our inventory, figure out what our bills are, figure out what our spending needs are for the family, and then what's left over. Now, you might figure out in the beginning there's not a lot left over. That's okay because you're going to get extra pay periods a couple times a year. You're going to get a, 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 a bonus check possibly. You're going to get a refund check possibly. Um, and you might still, we might still be in stimulus season where you might get a stimulus check. All those funds should go directly into this account over here and not make it a part of your normal life. For those of you that don't have this stream of income, you can't do this until you go and get more revenue. So I encourage you to do the best that you can but those of you that are bringing in money, and this works for $100,000, $400,000, or $50,000. The system works no matter which way you're going. It's just a matter of segregating your money, separating your assets, separating your liabilities, and that way you make sure that you have enough resources to tackle everything that you need. So your money tip for this week, and next week we'll do a mindset tip, your money tip for this week is to separate and segregate your money and never forget 
that every dollar has a duty. So assign a duty to your money. This money is for the electric bill. And this money is for gasoline and groceries. And then you assign them a, a, a post. They go into the bills, they go into the spending, or they go into the savings. Now, one last little trick that I do for my clients and for myself is that all of my accounts are named. So when you pull them up on your phone or when you pull it up on your, on your computer, it says bills, it says Derek spending, it says Devin spending, it says emergency fund money. Never, ever touch this account. It doesn't say all that, but it says emergency, okay? If you're going on vacation or travel and you need to set money aside, guess what? Travel, home repair, you can never have enough accounts, but give your dollars a duty, and I promise you, you'll never regret it. That's today's tip, and I'll see you right back. Okay. Every week, I want to bring something to you that's going to help you level up. Now, granted, all this is going to help you level up, but I want to bring you an outside resource, outside the 24K life, something outside of myself, outside of what we do to help level you up. Now, I've already given you the uh, the Dare B fitness app, so I did give you something. I'm going to give you something else because we, we did that in the news. We're going to do this outside. So this is our 24K Life Level Up Recommendation of the Week. It is a book called Outliers. It is written by Malcolm Gladwell. He wrote the book in 2008. It is a New York Times bestseller. The book is 304 pages. So, you know, it's not that bad. This book is 326 pages. So it's over 300 pages. Malcolm Gladwell is a Canadian author who is a huge researcher. He's a New York uh, Times um, contributor to the New York Times. And um, there is a big difference between being, just so you understand this, there's a big difference between an Amazon bestseller and a New York Times bestseller. One of them, you can sell you know, 500 books in an hour and you're a bestseller for that hour. The other one, you need to sell over 10,000 copies in a week. Big difference. So this guy knows his stuff. So what's the book about? In the book, Malcolm discusses things outside of the norm, so outliers, things outside the norm that can make a big difference in you obtaining your success. And he goes through them. He came up with the 10,000 hour rule. He explains that in the book. In order to be an expert at anything, he discusses why it takes over 10,000 hours of focused intent something that you should really take a look at and learn and, and understand, even if you don't read the book. He also introduces and talks about the Matthew effect. The Matthew effect essentially is this. For people who have an advantage, maybe you're good looking, maybe you're really smart, maybe you're tall, maybe you've got great communication skills, but for people who have an advantage, when they use that advantage, it helps them create an even bigger advantage. Now, it sounds kind of hokey, but listen, all they're saying and all he's saying is that if you have a unique advantage, you need to use it to get a bigger advantage. And the people that do that are the ones that rise higher and have a longer reach to, to reach back and help other people. In the book, he always also talks about the accumulated, the cumulative advantages that lead to its success, the accumulated advantages that lead to success. He talks about changing your paradigm, and most importantly, the book is on Audible. You know, I know you're busy. I know things are flying around in your life, and you might not have time to sit down and read a 300-page book, but it's on Audible, so if you need to, reach out, grab it off Audible. I don't know if you knew this, but you can also get tons of books, almost any book that's been on the marketplace longer than a year, you can get at your local library on Audible or in the paperback um, or digital. So you can get it right from your mobile device or your, your iPad or your, your PDA. Grab that and make sure you read it. But the book is Outliers. I highly recommend it. I read it a few years ago. Great book. It will help you to level up 24K style. 